Hey everyone, Matt from Pyramine back again for yet another breakdown. Uh, today we are going to take a short look at Stay Zed. Sure, you all know the song. It's got, I don't know, 100 and something million plays on Spotify. I don't even know how many millions. It's got a ton of plays, and it's a really cool song. We're going to take a quick look at the chorus, and we're going to take a look really at two things. It's kind of a short one today. Two things about what's going on in the chords and what the chords and the melody do together. Okay? So the two lessons for today, number one is God bless the one, two, three. You've heard me talk about the one, two, three before in melodies when it's one, two, three, two, one, or minor, two, three, two, one, something like that. Well, you can use the one, two, three in a chord. And that's what he does. I'll show you what that is. Uh, the second thing we're going to look at is a really neat question that I like to say, when is a C minor not a C minor? Because these things can magically change, right? Or not. You know I like to point at cameras, so I'm going to point at cameras. First of all, let's just jump into it. I'll talk a little bit about other stuff really cool that's going on here at Pure Mind and with me afterward. Uh, but right now, let's jump right in. Boom! Okay. First things first, here we have key of F minor. Go figure. Side note, why is everybody in F minor? Like everybody's in F minor. Someone said it's because it's the lowest note you can reproduce in the clubs and still have the bass kick through, but I'm starting to think that people are in F minor just because everybody else is in F minor. We do have other keys. Just saying. In any case, we're in F minor. F, G, A flat. Now, Ableton will tell you that this is G sharp. It's not. Yes, it's G sharp, but no, it's not. In this case, in the key of F, it is A flat. F, G, A flat, B flat, C. D flat, E flat, F. So. F minor. The chord progression you've heard a bazillion times before. It is the six, seven, one of Aeolian. That represents flat six major, flat seven major, one minor Aeolian. This is electronic music 101. So one being F minor, let me pull up my keyboard so you guys can actually see along with this. Bear with me for a hot second. Yeah, that's better. F minor, which means D flat major, flat six, E flat major, flat seven, F one, six, seven, one. Six, seven, one, one's minor, Flat six, six, major, flat seven, seven, major, one. That's basically what's going on in the chorus. However, that's not interesting. I'm guessing it's not interesting to Zed because he did something different. So if we take a look at Dawson chords, you have... sounded pretty good to my ear, so I ran with it. Now, if we break these down, let me zoom in a little bit here. You'll see, waha, what did I tell you? Ableton was gonna tell you it's a sharp. It's not. Don't believe it. Right note, wrong name. Oh well. So, what the hell is D sharp, F, G sharp? Or, said more appropriately, what the hell is E flat, F, and A flat? If we go over to the piano, you have Okay. That's not a chord. But I played it, and it's in the song, so it must be a chord, right? No. What's happening here is the first chord is C sharp, D flat. And what he's doing is he's doing the one, two, three. Five. So the right hand is doing two, three, five. Left hand is doing one. Take the exact same shape. Well, this one's major. The next one's major. Well, let's do the same damn thing. And then the one, full minor. Okay? That's basically what's going on. Left hand. We'll talk about that in a second. E flat, E flat, F, C, D flat, E flat, F. 
Right hand, two, three, five. Two, three, five. One, three, five. By the way, if he kept the two, three, five progression going, it would have ended up two, flat, three, five. Which is cool, I just didn't hear it. I didn't think he did that. Maybe I'm wrong. Which is very cool, love that tension, but I don't think he did that. So, back again to what I did. Looks like this. Bass notes. This C sharp is C sharp, it's also D flat. Two names, one note, doesn't sound any different. The difference is that there are some rules with the scales. The key of F, for example, happens to be a flat scale. It's a F, G, A, B flat in major, F, G, A flat, B flat, first four notes in minor. And so the rule is the scale you build has to have every letter name represented once and only once. So I can't say F, G, G sharp, because that's two Gs, and then I'd have to skip A and go to B flat. So that doesn't work. And you can't mix sharps and flats. So we go F, G, next letter A, flat, next letter B, flat. That's the deal. Um, I imagine it would be quite difficult to contextualize the clip view to make it understand what key you were in, particularly if you're changing keys, and what if you go from a sharp key to a flat key? What's it gonna do then? It sounds like chaos. Um, so let's run with that as the example, or the, as the reason as to why it's all sharps. But know that it is all sharps in the clip view, even though, according to music theory, it's not going to be sharps sometimes. That's just a little side note. The rule here is any major chord you play, for fun, throw in some other notes. We love the one, two, three. Lord love the one, two, three, so why not? One, two, three, five. And then one, two, three, five. And if you want, on the minor, one, two, three, five. There's some very rich chords. It's instant complexity just by adding in the two, which is also the ninth, but it's the two, and we'll talk about that another time. That's part one. Now, part two to this whole thing is when is a C sharp chord not a C sharp chord? No, no answers. I didn't have one either until I did this. Here's the deal. On this note, well, that sounds kind of low and thuddy, but on this C, when the chords are D flat major, add two, E flat major, add two, F minor, and then C minor. By the way, he plays it inverted. You can hear the melody going. It's this note that I want to pay attention to, okay? This A flat. So what happens in the melody is you have, right? Right there. In mine, so I think that's the line, in mine. Okay, so if I did the left hand chords, you'd have no big deal until here. What is this? C minor, add A flat. I'll do it in the same octave. C minor, add A flat. That's a C minor, add flat six, flat 13. But it is also A flat major seven, inverted. So that's when a C minor chord is not a C minor chord. When it's a seventh and when it's inverted. It's really easy to recognize this as a C minor, add the A flat. It's not so easy to recognize it as A flat major seven, which is also what it is. So yeah, chords can be two things at once. Crazy. That's pretty much it. So if I could, I will share with you 
the entirety of my mock-up, you can have some fun with me. Because, for fun, I tried to sing the line. Yeah. My voice is a little deeper than hers, so I had to have a lot of help. There's definitely some tuning going on here. And I'll show you what I did with something called the vocoder just for fun. But first things first, this is my mock-up. <laughs> Yeah, that's me singing. Haha, <laughs> have some fun with it. Uh, some other time, perhaps, I'll share with you what it sounded like before. Not so good. Anyway, thank you, Isotope and Nectar, for uh, helping me tune this. Actually, it was Nectar Pitch Correction. Thank you, because otherwise it wouldn't have even sounded that decent. So, why don't I show you a little something while we're here, since the chords were pretty quick. Those of you who are not hip to vocoders, maybe some of you are. If you're hip to vocoders, you want to bail on the video, bye. If you don't, stick around, because there's something fun here. So, on this vocoder track, I have my tuned vocal, and I also have the vocoder. I gated it because when I sang it, I had the click and there's a little bit of click bleed in there, so uh, forgive me for that, but uh, this is kind of quick and dirty. The idea behind a vocoder is that you have a voice. It doesn't have to be a voice, usually is a voice. A voice like mine sounds like a person talking. You hear words, you hear pitch, you hear envelope, you hear filtering. It's all happening in the mouth and throat. Amplifier, oscillator, filter. Well, we take that map, that envelope map, and then we steal the frequency map from another sound, and we have the two play together. So it sounds like a talking keyboard. So in the vocoder tool, it's actually very simple to set up. You put the vocoder on the vocal track, and then you give it a source. Okay. So right now I had audio from bass and chords, which is this guy. And as you can see, the vocoder is showing you certain bands of frequency energy. You have a number of bands. Uh, I think I have up to 20 right now. You can go up to 40 bands, uh, more bands, more detail, less bands, a little rougher. Um, and you basically build a little bit of a frequency map. I got rid of some of the highs and some of the lows. We didn't get rid of them, but lowered them. And that's it. The vocoder does the rest of the work. So if I solo the vocoder, as well, it'll sound like this. I have a gate here to get rid of some of the extra noise, and if I get rid of the keys themselves... Yeah, when the robots walk around your house and serve you coffee, they'll sound like this. Although probably by then they'll probably have your voice map and they'll sound just like you to feed your ego, because why not? Anyway, the vocoder, good fun. Um, the only other thing that I find kind of fun to play with is the unvoiced knob here. Um, it tends to add a certain amount of extra noise to the sound. Uh, let me give you a before and after. Particularly for vocals, it gives you a nice little bright which helps with intelligibility, it helps with uh, sibilant recognition. So I find that a little bit of unvoiced um, white noise can be really useful in that. This is Stay. Um, I'll make this session available for those of you who want. Um, I had a request from one of my mentor students to when I'm going to put sessions up there, uh, don't just put it up in Ableton or Logic, but maybe give us a standard MIDI file also. So I will do that. So that if you're using FL Studio or Reaper or Cubase or Studio One or whatever the hell you're using out there, Reason, if that's your thing, um, you can also use the MIDI in your DAW and you don't have to get stuck with mine. So I'll do that for everybody, and uh, that's about it. I hope to see you again soon. Um, quick little bit of side news, by the way. Uh, many of you probably saw I launched a producing and arranging class here at Pyramind. It sold out. Wow. Thank you, as always, 
everybody, I really appreciate that you appreciate what I'm doing here. Um, I cannot take any more students in that class this May 2017. The class will come back around in September. And by then, I imagine you can take the class either with me or with any one of the 80 members of our mentorship network. If you don't want to do the class and you just want to book sessions, by all means, you can book myself and anyone else on the network through paramind.com slash mentorship. Um, might need to find someone else during the summer. I'm going to be a little busy handling the students I've got. Uh, again, thank you, everybody. Hope to see you again real soon here at Paramind. And between now and then, remember, just put your hand in mine. The clock is ticking, so stay. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pyramind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at pyramind.com.